Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. How's everybody doing? Did y'all have fun last night? I heard some stories. I heard some stories that it was a good time. Um, well, I just want to quickly say thank you to everybody for coming. We really appreciate it. I mean, these events are really epic for us, right? We get to meet everybody. We get to get to know you more on a personal level. And it really is kind of our why as our clients, right? We love working with you guys, and we appreciate you coming out. So I have a little bit of explaining to do. Um, I've got you know, cards on here, poker chips. You guys are like, what is this guy doing with all these gambling references in his talk? So I've got two numbers. Kind of look at those. Maybe make some guesses in your mind what they are. But just a quick story. Um, so when I turned 21, I wanted to go play blackjack. I'd seen movies about it. Uh, I was really excited. Um, and I live in Utah. Gambling is actually illegal there. So fortunately, there's a town west called Wendover. It's about an hour and a half away. Um, and I headed out there with some of my friends. And for those of you who are maybe avid gamblers, you might understand some of these terminology. For those of you who don't, I'm going to explain it as best I can. But I might not give the full service to it, because I just, I just know all these terms really well. So I walk into the casino, and um, I see an opening at the table, right? I'm like, OK, cool. And oh, and by the way, my mom gave me like 100 bucks. She's like, here you go. Like, go have some fun. I'm like, this is awesome. So I head in, and I sit down in what's called third base. So anybody who's familiar knows that third base is the last player before the dealer, right? And in my experience with blackjack up until that point, I thought, oh, it's like, I just need to get a higher number than the dealer. That's all that matters. But what I found and what I kind of relate, I kind of relate third base to PPC, right? Everybody's eyes are on PPC. Everybody's wondering, what's PPC going to do? Is PPC you know, going to make the right decision? What's going to happen? And so I got Delta 13. Dealer gets, has a six showing. Anybody who's played blackjack knows that is every no question you stay. You never take a card. If the dealer's got a bust hand, three, four, five, six, you do not take a card. Well, I was like, oh, he's got, he's got three more than me. I need to take a card. And I took a card. And everybody in here hates me right now because I took a card. I took the dealer's bust hand, and I made that mistake. And it's something that I see in marketing all the time where the first thing we do as marketers is we say, do you want to do a demo, or do you want to give me your credit card number? Right? We get antsy. We get anxious. We get too aggressive right up front. They don't even know who we are yet. Right? That's like taking a bust hand when you should really kind of introduce yourself, et cetera. So 4,000, that's the estimated number of ads that we see per day. I would say that that's on the low end. Right? You're constantly driving around. You're seeing ads on buses. You're scrolling through your Facebook. You're, scrolling, you know, you're doing searches on Google. You're on YouTube. You're seeing ads all the time. And eight represents the attention span of a human being in seconds. I think we've all been told these numbers you know, a million times. The market is getting more crowded, and people's attention span is getting shorter. We really need to stand out. And so you know, as I go through this today, there's really two things that I want everybody to take away from. Number one is we really need to invest in our content even more so than what we're doing now. We need to double down on what we're doing. We need to really make sure that what we're putting out is quality because we don't have a lot of time to show that that's the right type of content for our consumer. And number two is we need to start looking at PPC as more of a driver to learn what content works and, and leverage PPC in a better way to test and understand what type of content we should be producing. So um, there's a couple things that we can do, right? Some of these are very obvious. A lot of you probably do this already. And some of these might be not so obvious and some, some new tactics or strategies that you can take away from this. So from a content standpoint, everybody produces content. It adds value to your consumer or your end client. Now, a great way to get more information from your client is do an exchange, right? Hey, give me your email address, and I'm going to give you this really good white paper or this really cool ebook that will add value to you. 
It's an easy way to get an email address, be able to put them into your email nurturing flows, and it's something that a lot of you are probably already doing. It's a great way, instead of saying, what's your credit card number, or do a demo, to say, hey, this is who we are, this is what we believe in, and here's the benefits of working with a company like us. And if you give us our, your email, we'll keep sending you these really valuable pieces of content. You're building that trust so that when the consumer has decided if they want to buy the product or not, or work with your company or not, you're already at the top of their list because you've built this credibility and trust. Um, another strategy that we have used and really have become fond of is not gating content, right? If you send people to a blog post, you can actually see a lot of information about how they're responding to that page, how long they're staying on the site, what the scroll depth is, how many other pages did they go to, where were some you know, exit points, things like that. And that's twofold. It gives you insights into how to better optimize your website, but it also lets you segment your audiences so that down the line you know what type of content to serve up to them. Hey, they left on this page or they left on this page. We should create some sort of content to help overcome those concerns. Another thing is turning your content into videos. If you guys have an FAQs page on your website, why not turn that into a video series? On YouTube, you can create a sequential video series that you go through all of your FAQs, you overcome all of your customer's response, and you're able to build that trust and let them know why they need to work with you. Uh, and the other one would be testing messaging to enhance your website content. I feel like this is something that's not done enough in the industry, and I'm trying to make a real big push about it, is see what, see what headlines work in your search ads, see what descriptions work in your search ads, and include those in your meta, you know, your title tags, meta descriptions. Really improve what you're doing from a paid standpoint, test what works well, and then implement it into your organic strategies, whether it be on Facebook, social media, Google Ads, YouTube, all of those things. Oh, whoops. Cool, so here's just a couple examples of gating content, right? This is, this is what we want to end. We want to stop taking a card when the dealer's showing a six. We want to introduce ourselves. We want to really build up a brand. So this is an example of one of our clients um, where we tested going straight for a demo versus actually giving something of value, a white paper. Uh, before, you know, as we did the split test here, we had going straight for a demo, the cost per demo was $1,300. Nowhere near sustainable. No way, there was no way that that would make money and there was no way that we could keep doing that strategy. But when we gave an asset, when we actually added value to the client and gave them some sort of content, our cost per asset download was $15, and of those people, we were able to get the cost down to $100 per demo, you know, saving $1,250, right? Super telling example of why we need to build that trust and why we need to build that credibility. Otherwise, people are going to be upset by just, hey, give me your credit card, et cetera. No trust built. Um, here's another example. So this is the strategy that I talked about earlier where leverage PPC to drive traffic to your blogs. Drive traffic to your pieces of content and don't gate it. Let people navigate. Let people tell you and self-select what they're interested in and then fine tune your messages so that you can talk to them in a different way. We need to use PPC to understand our audiences and learn how to talk to them better. Um, this was a campaign where we were running just a remarketing strategy, right? We knew what type of audiences were there, what their engagement levels were like, but we didn't really build any sort of trust or have a good way of segmenting our audiences and understanding that. So what we did is it's the cold versus warm audience approach. If somebody is cold to you, they don't even know who you are, you cannot just ask them for a demo or ask them to buy a product right away. You really need to create a sense of trust, show the benefits, show the values, and really work with them on that. So we took, we took all of the top five blogs that we had written and where the most traffic was going, and we started sending display traffic there. And then from that, we created all these different audience types, time on site, uh, scroll depth, how many pages, and then based upon certain things, we started sending different messages. So this first number is the customer acquisition cost 
with just remarketing, which is always going to be great, right? Customer acquisition cost for remarketing should be one of your better numbers. But this bottom number is a blended cost of not only the cold audience traffic, so sending display traffic to the website, segmenting our audiences, and then remarketing to them. And we're actually able to lower the cost to $185 and 17 times the number of acquisitions. And the reason why is we were able to cast a wider net, drive people to the site for much cheaper cost, right? Display clicks are pennies compared to what you might see on a search engine or within social media, especially with how the market's going. Um, so we were able to drive lots of traffic to the website, segment those audiences, and then double down on the people who are showing intent. These are the users that you want to keep spending your money on, are those that are already engaging and showing that. Cool, so another thing that, um, you know, my topic is double down on content, right? These are some strategies to leverage your content, but there's also a second half of this of being creative with your targeting. There are a lot of content creators out there. Anybody in here personally, influencer, YouTube, blog, blog post, anybody, raise of hands? I know we have a few at Avalanche that have big social media followings, right? There are people in your space that have created these really amazing followings. And the people, it's like a cult-like following. If they say to jump, the person says how high, right? They just trust everything that they say. Um, and so I really want to kind of show some opportunities with other content creators, how we can leverage that with Google's networks, and create some really cool strategies for targeting. So these numbers right here, 600 million blogs in the world today. Um, earnings from the top 10 YouTube channels, 180.5 million, and 4,000 hours of annual media consumption, right? We're constantly looking at influencers, seeing what they do. For context, there's only like 8,700 hours in a year, right? So like half of our time, we're consuming media, we're watching vlogs, we're reading about certain things, and it's just a market that we all need to get a handle on. We all should know who the top content creators are to where our audience would be located because it's really just easy pickings like running some pre-roll video ads on their YouTube channels, running some display ads on their blogs. Because like I said, these people trust these content creators and if we sh are showing up before an ad, just naturally they're gonna say, oh, they, they must have some sort of affiliation with this certain blogger or influencer, right? Oh, whoops, wrong button. Cool, so Google's really done a good job of offering these opportunities to PPC. We can target YouTube channels, we can target YouTube videos, we can target specific blogs if they've opted into Google AdSense, which most of them have, that's how they're making their money, right, is from click traffic. So I wanna talk through a few different ideas for both the blogging world and the video world and how we can leverage that within PPC. All right, we talked about how we can leverage our content. Now let's talk about some creative strategies to target these users. So some ideas and things that we've tested is researching top blogs in our space, understanding what the top bloggers are, who our audience is reading, who they're looking at, and understanding where those people are. If they're opted into Google Display Network, let's target their blogs. Let's serve display ads there. Let's make sure that we're introducing ourselves on those pages so that these bloggers are happy making money, putting out more content, and our customers are seeing our ads on their pages. Another idea is how to, right? How many of our consumers are constantly searching these long tail terms like how to do this, how to do that? It's a great opportunity to not only build trust, but to show up on the terms that they're looking for. So an example of this would be you go to a search engine, you search how to, and you find the top five blogs that are ranking organically, and you can plug that in as what's called a custom intent audience. These are the audiences that are going to those blogs all of the time. Another example of this would be um, searching like what I might consider a champion keyword, right? What are the keywords that you wanna rank number one for Google on? Put that in your search engine box, see which ones are ranking organically, and then add those URLs as a custom affinity audience. And those are three great ways that we can leverage bloggers and blog content as a targeting option and letting Google's machine learning finding those people and placing our ads in the right place at the right time. On the video side, 
find the people who are putting out good vlogs. They have high amount of subscribers, their product is complementary or works well with what we sell or what we do, and run a pre-roll video ad on it. The person goes to watch that vlogger's video and they're introduced to this new brand they've never heard before. And they're like, oh man, that's cool. I didn't know this existed, right? It's a great way to introduce that. We can actually look at target specific videos. So if there's a video that pairs well with your product or if there's a video that makes a lot of sense for you to be running pre-roll on, that's another example. And then another one would be people also viewed. If there's other videos out there that resonate or they're complementary, that's an, another way that we can target these content creators and piggyback of, off of what they are already doing and already being wildly successful for. All right, let's gamble. I wanna, I wanna kinda walk everybody through an example here of how this actually comes to life. I want something actionable where it's like, I feel empowered now to create a campaign or like a strategy around what we just talked about. So I went to Google and I typed in how to count cards. The beauty of Google is it gives me eight other how-to keywords that are relevant and have high volume around counting cards. This is a prime example of what I can put in as my custom intent audience. People who are looking at how to count cards, how to count cards in poker, how to count cards for dummies. All of these things could be created as a custom intent audience. And then once I actually land on the page, I can look at the blogs and see which ones are ranking organically the best. If they're ranking well on Google organically, People are liking them, otherwise Google wouldn't show them up at the top of the page, right? So then I go into uh, Audience Manager within Google Ads, and I create a custom intent audience around how-to keywords. There's two, there's two options that you can do. You can do Google search terms or in-market keywords. For YouTube, you can leverage Google search terms. For display, you have to use in-market keywords. But these are audiences that you can create and you can target as a cold audience, right? This is where we're gonna leverage our content that we've already created, gated assets, or a really good blog post that we've already decided on. The other end would be a custom affinity audience, putting in URLs. These were the top blogs that ranked organically on Google. I want Google to find blogs like that and other content like that. Get me some audiences that fit into this particular topic or audience. And then I go to YouTube and I type in how to count cards. And I find that there's this great channel that already talks about counting cards and blackjack and everything of this nature. And they have 110,000 subscribers. So people are listening to this channel. They're getting ideas from this channel. Oh, and masterclass.com is already serving a display ad on the YouTube video. That's a tactic that I don't see a lot of is actually targeting YouTube videos with your display ads. And if you're on a mobile, it's Literally, the thing right below the video is most of the time an ad. It's a great way to build that brand, build that trust, and show up in the right place in front of the consumer. And now, how do we, how do we track all of this? How do we make sure that this isn't just something that's going on? Oh, we think it's helping. It's all about creating audiences, right? We go into Google Analytics. If we tag everything with the proper UTMs, we can put specific campaign names or keyword names and be able to say, okay, this original source of traffic came from this campaign or this particular video ad or whatever it might be. And then on the YouTube side, we can actually say they viewed this video as an ad and we can create audiences off of that and leverage those. And this is kind of an example of the, the finished product, right? You've got two or three display campaigns. This is kind of a naming convention I would use. I'm kind of a naming convention freak, but display custom affinity, right? Display custom intent. The reason why I break out these two different audience types into campaigns is otherwise custom affinity will really eat up all of your budget. And so it's best to kind of segment those out so that you can control the spend based upon the audience type. Custom affinity is definitely way up here. Custom intent is a little more down here. And so by being able to allocate that budget properly, that's where you can really see you know, dividends. Video channel hit list, right? This is where I'm targeting that blackjack apprenticeship YouTube video you know, channel that they've created. Um, blog hit list, this is where I'm putting in all the blogs that I wanna show ads on. And then the beauty of this is dynamic search free marketing. So dynamic search is an in-between of SEO and PPC, for those of you who don't know. 
It's Google will index your site. It'll find keywords that make sense. It'll generate automatic headlines and automatic landing page. And based upon what people are searching, it can serve an ad. Now, if you open that up to the public, it can be a little risky, right? That's like take, that's a, that's a wild bet, is opening it up to the public. But if you set your audiences to targeted, you're actually able to see how many of the traffic you've driven from these display campaigns, custom affinity, custom intent, how many YouTube audience viewers are searching for keywords relevant to your business, and then actually going to your website and buying product or filling out a lead form. It works great for two reasons. Number one is you get insights into what a warm audience looks for for your product and what they convert on. So you can then add those as non-branded keywords that you might open up to the entire public, right? Hey, these keywords seem to be searched a lot by our people who are coming to our website a lot and they're actually buying product. Now let's go out and let's open this up to the public and see if other people who search these keywords buy our product. Um, Within each campaign, it's really good to have two or three audiences to test, figure out which audience is really working the best and driving, and that's why it's important to have those UTMs so you can understand that data. But anyways, next time you guys are in Wendover, hit me up, I'm happy to uh, sit down at the table with you and um, let's all double down on our content and really make it work. Thank you. <laughs>